Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today I'd like to talk about some tools in MATLAB and Simulink that will allow us to easily and quickly trim a model. The majority of the time today is going to focus on the tools that allow us to do this trimming. If you're interested in some of the background theory or discussion related to trimming a system or just would like to dig a little bit deeper, feel free to check out our other video which will talk a little bit more about trimming a dynamic system using numerical optimization. Now, that being said, while I wouldn't consider this video to be necessarily a, a strict prereq, to make sure we're all on the same page, why don't we go ahead and recap a couple of the major points that we made in this discussion as it relates to trimming. So, the concept with trimming, right, is that you have some type of a dynamic system. And typically, this is described by a system of usually nonlinear ordinary differential equations. Now, the idea here is that this system would have some input u, which might be a vector, so there might be multiple inputs, and there might be multiple outputs as well. Now this thing also has an internal state which we'll call x. Right? So again, you've got inputs u, outputs y, and internal state x. Now, the concept with uh, trimming, or sometimes it's also referred to as finding an operating point, is it's really simple. All you would like to do in some cases is it might be des desirable to find a pair of inputs and states which yield some type of desired behavior or maybe some desired output. Right? So maybe we should just write that down here, that a trim point... Uh, sometimes also known as an operating point. Right? It's really just a pair of, let's call it x naught and u naught, typically constant here, that yield some type of desirable behavior. So desirable behavior or maybe a you know, state trajectory or output, however you like to look at it, right? So if the system is something like, like an airplane, right? Trimming it and a desired behavior might be something like finding the control inputs and the state vector that would yield straight and level steady state flight. Right? So obviously, in order for this aircraft to fly straight and level, it has to be going at a certain velocity, it has to have a certain angle of attack, the engines have to be uh, set to a certain propulsive force, the elevator has to be set at a certain uh, deflection angle to maintain this angle of attack, etc, etc. Right? And you can kind of see this is where that term trimming came from, right? We talked about this earlier. It literally came from aircraft systems where a pilot would be the one that would manually be fidgeting with the control inputs here to try to manipulate the state so it got into the desired configuration so that you would have the desired trajectory and maybe the desired outputs, like the aircraft was just flying straight and level, right? So that's the idea with trimming. Maybe one other quick side note that I might want to make before we go on here. Trimming and operating points, um, sometimes people refer to these as equilibrium points as well, but they're not all interchangeable. Remember, in that other video we mentioned here that a trim point is not the same thing as an equilibrium point, right? Remember, the equilibrium point idea was that if this system here was described by some x dot is equal to f of x and u, right? An equilibrium point is typically defined here as the set of x and u such that uh, f of x and u, maybe we should put the knots on them, all these are knots, right? These are the, the locations you're interested in, is equal to zero. In other words, it yields zero state derivatives. So meaning that if you stayed at that condition, if you found this magical uh, set of control inputs and set of states, the system would stay there and it wouldn't move because x dot is equal to zero. So you can clearly see that coming back to our example of the aircraft in straight and level flight as it's flying along, yeah, the major a lot of the states do have state derivative is equal to zero, but for sure the position is not the the position dot is not equal to zero, right? This thing has it can't hover, right? It's not a quad rotor, so it needs to be moving at some velocity in order to obtain this trim point. So some of the states, like the position east or the position north, is definitely changing as you move along, right? So just another little small point that we may want to mention here that when we're talking about trimming a model, uh, we're talking about finding this operating point. We're not necessarily 
necessarily finding an equilibrium point, right? You might want to find an equilibrium point, which is uh, which is a type of uh, trim point, but vice versa is not true, right? Okay, so that being said, um, the discussion today now is with this background, what we want to do is look at some MATLAB tools that will allow us to make constraints or specify certain controls or certain states and put restrictions on them so that we can try to find these operating points. So maybe we should just quickly write that down here. What we want to do here is we want a tool that can place restrictions uh, or maybe constraints might be a better word. On, you might want to put a constraint on the state vector. You might want to put a constraint on the control vector. You might even want to put a constraint on the state vector derivatives here, right? So typically this is what's done, right? You specify, I want the aircraft flying at a certain altitude at a certain speed, and I want the ailerons to be zero, but I'll let the other ones be free. And I want it to be in steady state in the sense that I don't want the uh, some states like the acceleration, which is the, the derivative of velocity, to be zero, right? So the idea now is to find these trim points, you want to find operating points which satisfy any constraints that we place on a subset of either the state controls or the state derivative dots, and also satisfies the dynamics of the system, okay? So as you can see, doing this for a complicated system manually is, is very difficult, right? And then that's exactly like we talked about earlier. That's what a trained pilot is doing, right? A pilot trains for many years and they understand the dynamic system they're playing around with, namely the aircraft. They understand it so well that they know how to manipulate some of these controls and states to get to a trim point or to an operating point. Now, if you have some other arbitrary model or it's very, very complex, we need some mathematical tools that are gonna allow us to try to find an operating point which satisfies these constraints that we're gonna put on the system, okay? So with that being said, give me a second, I'll erase the board and let's look at a very simple example system that we can use as our concrete uh, test case for these uh, studies. All right, so the example I'd like to use for this case study is the planar vehicle that we actually derived in one of our previous videos. So if you haven't seen our discussion on deriving the equations of motion for this simple planar vehicle, please check that out because I'm gonna assume that you've already seen this before proceeding forward so you have a good understanding of how this model behaves and some of the dynamics. We're gonna see that later on, understanding the trim uh, solutions, it's very helpful to have a physical intuition on how the system should behave just so you can check to make sure the results are reasonable. So that being said, um, um, just to refresh your memory, right? It's a planar vehicle like a boat or I guess like that rocket ship from asteroids. It's a system where you can actually uh, move around in the plane, right? But the system can rotate independently. It's got sort of these independent thrusters so it can spin on an axis if you want to. Uh, that's how it's set up, right? It's got states like here. You've got X, Y position, X, Y velocity, angular position and angular velocity. And then you've got two throttle, uh, two control inputs. One is a throttle for the axial force. The other is a throttle setting for the, uh, the moment that you can exert on the vehicle. Again, here's the equations of motion that we derived earlier. And here's some of these intermediate variables, okay? So for this specific example, what I'd like to look at is let's put some numerical values to some of these parameters. And we saw this, this model is parameter pretty e pretty simply there aren't too many constants that go along with it so the constants I want to use here is let's use a mass of how about uh, 10 kilograms um, a moment of inertia here of uh, 5 kilogram meter squared how about a maximum axial force that the uh, system can exert is 10 newtons so the engine is uh, in the axial direction is 10 newtons strong here and then the maximum moment that the axial thrusters can, or the uh, rotational thrusters can exert here is 0 0.5 newton meters. Let's say that the coefficient of drag, right, we lumped all of those, the basically the the coefficient of drag to this, this nonlinear drag term here uh, is, actually I don't want to call it coefficient of drag, right, because we saw that's, that's all this stuff lumped together, like the density of the medium, the, the cross-sectional area, all that. It's just some constant. Let's pick something as just 1 over 40, which is about also 0 0.025. Again, remember this had units of Newton second squared meter squared in our model. And then let's pick a, again, our coefficient of rotational uh, drag, if you want to think about it that way, as how about 0.75 uh, units of Newton meter seconds. 
Okay, and I think that was all the parameters we needed, okay? So now what I'd like to do is let's examine a couple of different scenarios. So what we're going to do now over the next couple of minutes here is look at trying to trim or find operating points of this planar vehicle in multiple cases. So for case one, what we're going to look at here is how about if I want this thing to move in the positive y direction at 15 meters per second, okay? Uh, and then maybe we'll contrast that to what about it in a case two? What if I wanted instead of just going in the positive y direction? How about an arbitrary direction? Uh, also at 15 meters per second, okay, and then maybe how about case three? Let's look at how about trying to do something like a, a steady orbit where I want the, the planar vehicle just spinning around in a circle. And then finally, let's look at case four here, which would be, how about let's repeat case one, which was this positive y direction, but at a slower speed, 10 meters a second, okay? So what we want to do now is, let's go over and examine these and see if there's a way we can use MATLAB Simulink to obtain what are the operating points for these conditions. So before we do that, give me a second and let's let's dig a little bit deeper here into case one. So I'm gonna pause the video, erase some of this stuff and uh, let's look at this a little bit more closely before we jump over to the tool. All right, so the first case we're gonna look at is just positive Y direction travel at 15 meters a second. Basically, that's saying I've got my, my planar vehicle. It can be placed, you know, it can actually be placed anywhere in this plane. And all I care about is that it is moving in the positive y direction of 15 meters a second. Maybe it's going like this. Maybe, you know, maybe it, we want to, is there, is there a way that it could possibly go like this? <laughs> or maybe like this, right? So the question now becomes, are there any constraints on any of these states to yield this operating condition, right? That are that to make it consistent with this operating condition or this trim point. So let's just write down all of our states, right? So we had uh, six states, and those corresponded to the x position, the y position, the x dot, the y dot, the theta, and the theta dot. Okay. So we just saw that the x and y position. It doesn't matter where you are in the plane. You can still achieve. Uh, upward travel here. So x and y can be free, right? Now that's not the true for x dot, right? In order to make sure that the vehicle is moving only in the positive y direction, I got to make sure that this is zero, right? So here's one constraint. x3 has got to be zero in order to be consistent with this operating condition. Similarly, y dot had better be exactly equal to 15. That's the velocity I want to be traveling at. Now, how about theta? Well, we know that the way this system operates, here's where some of the physical intuition might be helpful, is you know that the, the axial thrust force, right, that is what's going to get you this 15 meters a second, right? You're going to be basically cranking up the, the engine, the axial force engine, so that it pushes the vehicles to a velocity where the thrust from the motor is basically uh, equal to the drag, right? So we know that this thing has got to be aligned with the direction of travel in order to get us the motion we want. So in this case, we see that theta, that had better be 90 degrees, right? Remember that zero meant you're po pointing in the positive x-axis. So a theta of 90 degrees means you're pointed in the positive y-axis. So this has got to be pi over two. Okay, uh, theta dot now, we also know that in order to get consistent straight motion in this direction, we better make sure that theta dot doesn't vary, right? So this has got to be zero, okay? Now, maybe we should also ask ourselves, how about state derivatives here, right? So these here, if we put them, maybe we'll circle these in green or box them up in green, right? These are basically restrictions now on X or constraints on X, okay? Not only, uh, we're basically saying, are they, um, uh, what values do these these does this state vector have to have in order to be consistent with this operating condition? Now, what about the x dot? Okay, so how about x dot? What about x one dot, x two dot, x three dot, x four dot, x five dot, x six dot? We should basically ask ourselves a question: as, Do these have to be in steady state or not? Okay, so here let's ask ourselves that. So, okay, x one dot here. What was x1 dot? Well, x1 dot, right, isn't this, uh, according to us, that is x dot, right? Okay. Uh, what is x2 dot? 
x2 was this, so this is y dot, right? What is x3 dot? x3 dot is now x double dot, right? x4 dot is y double dot or y acceleration. x5 dot is theta dot. And x6 dot is now theta double dot, right? So we should ask ourselves, do any of these have to be in steady state? Well, x1 dot, yes, that has to be in steady state because we said it has to be zero. So this has to be in steady state. So maybe I'll mark this as a as SS. Now, y dot uh, is, uh, yeah, no, it's y dot is not equal to zero, right? So it's not, e not gonna be steady state, right? Because it's got to be at 15 meters a second. So this is not gonna be at steady state. It's gonna be at 15, okay? How about x double dot? Now, yes, we do know that that acceleration should be at, at zero. Again, since x dot is going to be at zero, we also want x double dot to be zero. So we need to make sure that this is at steady state. Okay. Similarly, we need to know that y double dot is also equal to zero. So there's no y acceleration. There might be y velocity, but there, we, we don't want it to be accelerating. So this should also be at steady state. Okay. And here we go. How about theta dot? Well, theta dot, yeah, actually is going to be at zero right so this is going to be at steady state okay and similarly theta double dot this should also be at steady state okay so let's also put these maybe i'll circle these in blue okay so here are basically uh, a couple of our restrictions on or our constraints on uh, x dot right we're basically just denoting which of these variables need to be in steady state or not, okay? And then finally, let's look at the u's. How about u1 and u2, right? u1 was our axial thrust, right? And then u2 was our uh, moment, right? Okay, so we know that this is sort of what we're looking for. This can be free, all right? Because what we're asking the system to do is we want to find out effectively what is the throttle setting that will yield us this operating condition, right? So we want this to be free. I know it can't be zero. It's got to be some non-zero value. But how about the moment? We know this has got to be zero, right? Because in order to make sure that the, that the vehicle stays pointing in this direction and doesn't, doesn't turn, right? I really want to make sure I don't induce a moment on this to make it turn. So if we circle these in red, here are basically our constraints on U, right? So great. What we've done now is we've narrow down the state space to val values which satisfy these constraints uh, on both the states and the controls, right? So what we want to do now is see if we understand and we have a good understanding of what constraints need to be met, we now want to go over to MATLAB and Simic and see if there's a tool that will allow us to find out what are some of these free variables right that will allow us to get an operating point or a trim point which is consistent with what we're looking for right with this desired behavior okay all right so keep this in mind maybe write these down because what we're going to do right now is let's run over to matlab simulate and see how we can directly use a tool to input these different types of constraints into the system and basically have the system solve for the free variables for us to find our operating point all right, so here we are in MATLAB, and I've just gone ahead and typed up a little script that initializes all of the constants that we talked about, as well as setting an initial condition for this model. So like we said earlier, the X and the Y locations are free, so I just randomly picked 10 and minus 10. It really doesn't matter. But we said X dot had better be 0, Y dot should be 15, theta should be 90 degrees, and theta dot should be 0. So let's just go ahead and run this to initialize all of these variables. And then what I've done is I've also built a little Simulink model here of the planar vehicle. So as we said, you've got the thrust fraction going in, you've got the torque fraction going in, and then you've got all of the states coming out on this side. So maybe to start, why don't we illustrate, you know, how might you iteratively tune this or trim this if you were a pilot or a operator of this vehicle? So what I would do is I would just start iteratively um, guessing, I guess, at what is the appropriate thrust fraction that's needed to get me 15 meters a second. So for example, I'm starting here with 0.1. And if I go ahead and run this simulation and look at the scopes, 
Uh, oh, we see that's, that's clearly not going to work here because a, a thrust of 0.1, look, we start at the right initial condition, but we're, we don't stay there, right? The, boat, the, boat, uh, the vehicle starts slowing down as drag overtakes it. So, I don't know, let's bump this up, 0.4. And then let's hit run again. Okay, we're doing better. We're staying closer to 15, but we're still not there. Uh, I don't know. How about 0.55? Okay, run it again. Okay, now we're really close here, right? Well, this is pretty close. Maybe we can do a little bit better. I don't know, 0.56 maybe? Is that better? There we go. Now we're, now we're getting at We're basically staying here. But I think you can see that while this is easy to do for a single... Uh, degree of freedom, right? In this case, we really only had to try to iterate on this thrust fraction here. If the system were more complicated and you had more knobs to tune or try to trim simultaneously, this would be really cumbersome. So we want to see, can we use a MATLAB or Simulink tool that will allow us to iteratively do that? And luckily, the answer is yes. So let's go ahead and look at that now. All right, so the first thing we're going to do here is let's actually prepare this model a little. So instead of me manually trying to iterate on the control inputs, let's delete these constant blocks, and we want the software or the tool to go ahead and try to find values that work for our operating point. So to do that, I'm going to basically open my Simulink browser, and I'm going to come here and find some of these imports and drag and drop them into the model. Okay, So I'll maybe make two of these one for the thrust and one for the torque and maybe let's rename this one as thrust and we'll rename this one here as torque okay um in a similar fashion let's grab a couple of outports actually maybe just one in this case we'll grab an outport grab drag and drop it into the model and let's go ahead and hook this up to the signal we care about which is a uh, y dot okay all right and i will again rename this thing as y dot Okay, so now what we've done is we've instrumented this model appropriately, and what we're able to do next is let's open up a tool that is actually extremely powerful. It's called the Linear Analysis Tool. If I come up here to Analysis in my Simulink model, come down to Control Design, and say Linear Analysis, what's going to open up is this other tool, which is the linear analysis tool. And this is incredibly powerful. It's got a lot of functionality. The functionality we care about is using it to trim the model like we talked about. So to do that, we come up here to the operating point, click on this little drop down, and we come down to trim model. When we bring that up, we get this dialog, which is effectively allowing us to make uh, place constraints on the state, the state vector dot, as well as a control. Right, so here's the control. Um, okay, maybe the first things first. Let's look at this. Uh, you see it's got state 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. How do we know which states do these correspond to? Well, if you look at this, up here it says planar vehicle model, planar vehicle, integrator, x, y, x dot, y dot, theta, theta dot. One question that's probably in the back of your mind is, where did it get this information, right? How does it know that state 1 is going to be x, state 2 is going to be y, state 3 is going to be x dot, etc., etc., right? Well, it's actually telling you here right in this uh, dialog, it's saying, go look in the, the, this model, in this block, in this subsystem block, and hopefully that's labeled. So, you know what? Let's just go ahead and check that for sanity. I'll come in here, and here's my model. Let's go ahead and look under the mask. Okay, and here we go, and if you look here, there, whoopsie, sorry, uh, let me drag this down over here, I'm trying to make this a little bigger and then zoom in all the way over to the integrator over here, and I've gone ahead and named the integrator something very specific. So I've gone ahead and listed which order the states are in this integrator. So this is a, my long-winded way of saying when you're building your models, instead of leaving these integrators just labeled as plain old integrator, you may want to label exactly what is it integrating and if it's a vector, what order is it integrating in, because other tools like the linear analysis tool will make use of this annotation and it will be more helpful uh, down the road. Okay, so with that being said, I'll just come up a level again, and let's go ahead and minimize this because we don't need the Simulink model. We need the linear analysis tool. Okay, so first off, let's go ahead and uncheck all of these. So we see here that what we can do is we can start placing these restrictions on the state like we talked about. So uh, we said earlier, I think what we said is x dot has got to be constrained to be 0, y dot is constrained to be 15, uh, theta is constrained to be pi over 2, and theta dot is constrained to be uh, 0. Now, which of these are in steady state? We said, okay, x is going to be in steady state, 
Y is not. And then X dot is going to be in steady state. Y dot should be in steady state. Uh, theta should be in steady state. And theta dot should be in steady state. Okay, so these are basically, uh, this first column is what we had circled earlier on the whiteboard in green. This second column is what we had circled in the whiteboard in blue. And now if we come here to this input tabs, Again, you'll see here are the two different inputs. Uh, yeah, here, channel one and channel two. And again, you might, or sorry, channel one and channel one, right? You might be asking, what are those? Well, look here. That is why we labeled this thing thrust and torque. So again, coming back to the Simulink model, we see that annotations start to make a lot more, uh, they, they're a lot more important right now. So here you can see that we call this thing thrust, and it shows up here as thrust, and this thing we call torque, and it shows up here in torque. So now we know what we want to do is we said we know that the torque input, or the fraction of the moment, has got to be set here at zero. Let's forget about the outputs for now, but if you're interested, you can just click over here in the outputs, and you can see this corresponds to that one Outport that we placed in the model over here at y dot. You see, here's the y dot, and here's the y dot. We're going to make use of this a little bit later. So let's come back here to the states, and um, let's see. Oh, the other thing that maybe we should mention here is all of these things here in the value column, you can click on these and change them. So, for example, if we wanted to constrain it instead of 15 meters a second to be like 10 meters a second, you could go ahead and enter that here. So, again, let's move this back to 15. This is what we are interested in. Okay, so we basically got the system set up and ready to trim. So all we need to do now is click on this start trimming button. And unfortunately, you see that we get a little bit of a hiccup. If you read this here, it says you couldn't find the, the system was not able to find a solution that satisfies all the constraints. Relax the constraints to find a feasible set or uh, to uh, find a feasible solution. Okay, so what that means is we've sort of, uh, while mathematically this should be feasible, we've made the system a little bit too constrained for the numerical optimization routine to find a solution. So let's start relaxing some of these that maybe don't matter as much. So for example, let's relax this steady state constraint on X, okay? And let's try again. And we end up with the same thing. So, all right, let's keep on relaxing constraints. How about let's get rid of this constraint here. Uh, this was what, x dot? Maybe let's, uh, let's not say it has to be zero. Let's just take it off and see what happens. Okay? And aha, now we were able to successfully meet all of the constraints. So after we relax those, we actually were able to get the system to go and trim the model for us. So to see what that trim point looks like, what you can do is just come over here and click on OP Trim 3. And you get this other window popping up. And maybe let's see, I don't know, yeah, I guess this is as big as it goes. But look at this. Let's first take a look at the solution for the state. So it said that... Um, the uh, desired value, I guess, yeah, we said we didn't care about x, we didn't care about y, we didn't care about x dot, we cared about y dot, we cared about theta and theta dot. And here's the solution it found. So it found a value here of, okay, x is 10, again, who cares? y is negative 10, who cares? It did find that x dot has got to be really close to zero, so that's great. Even though we didn't explicitly tell it to be zero, right? The numerical routine found the proper solution here of x dot's got to be zero. And it did find that x, uh, sorry, y dot has got to be 15, theta has got to be 90 degrees, and theta dot has got to be zero. And now, here's the, more, the other more interesting one. Which one of these did it find to be in steady state? So again, we see that x has got to be, uh, sorry, x dot has got to be in steady state. Y dot has got to be at 15. The x acceleration, or x double dot, is 0. Y double dot is 0. Theta dot is 0. And theta double dot is 0. So again, it, this looks beautiful, right? This x that we found and its state derivative seem to match. More importantly, the thing that we care about is here on the input tab. If you come here to the input tab, it found that in order to get this velocity that we, or this operating point that we want, here's the, tr the trim control that's needed. So we need a, a throttle setting of 0.5625. So we were pretty close when we were iteratively guessing at Simulink, but this is what should get us uh, much, much, much closer. Okay? So, uh, w tell you what, why don't we go back to the whiteboard real quick and just double check that this solution seems reasonable um, before moving on. All right, so the linear analysis tool found us a solution here for our operating point or our trim condition here. So this was, uh, I think it was 10 minus 10, uh, 0, 15, 
uh, pi over two and zero, right? That was our trim state. And the trim control was 0 0.5625 and zero, okay? So again, what we can do is maybe since the system is simple enough, we might have a chance to maybe analytically verify that this is the appropriate operating condition. So what we're trying to do here is we're starting here at 10, negative 10, right? And the system is going straight up, right? So if the system is going straight up at 15 meters a second, coming back to our free body diagram, right? We know that at that condition, what's going on here is you have FU pushing on, and the thing that's retarding the motion is just F drag, right? That's the only thing that's going on in this operating condition. Right? So at equilibrium, when, well, well, not, sorry, I used the wrong word. Remember, right? we talked about this is not an equilibrium point here, but at steady state, right, you have the, the axial thrust equaling the drag. So luckily, with our equations of motion, this is actually simple enough to, to kind of analytically solve. So maybe what we can do real quickly is we see that, okay, in this case, we need FU to be equal to F drag. Right? That's what should happen at this operating condition. So what is Fu? So the Fu is just F max times U1. So this is F max times U1. And what is the drag force? It's CT times V squared, right? So this is CT V squared. So if you solve this for U1, this is basically CT over F max times V squared, okay? Well, I already know what CT is, right? I think we were using a value of CT of one over 40. We know what F max was, shucks, I forgot what the actual constant number was for that. Uh, let me just double check it. Uh, we were using a 10, right? And then we know what V is. In this case, V is the velocity, right? The, the V is X3 squared plus X4 squared. It's just the velocity of the vehicle. So it's just 15, okay? So you plug all these numbers into this expression and you exactly get 0.5625. So again, this is fascinating and that we can analytically verify the numerical solution that the linear analysis tool got for us. So this is great. Uh, the, the solution sounds good. So maybe let's jump back to MATLAB and take some next steps about maybe saving this operating point. All right, that's great. So we verified that this solution for OP trim three, this is great. This solves the system or, or it gives us the proper trim point that we'd like. So the next thing we want to do is make sure that we save this because we did a little bit of work to get this. This is the important thing that we want to keep um, safe. So to do that, what you want to do is let me drag some of these out of the way is come back to the linear analysis tool and you kind of see that here in the linear analysis workspace it's created a couple of these variables now those variables only exist in the linear analysis tool workspace if we come back to main matlab and you look here in the workspace there's nothing called op trim one two or three okay so in order to get that back to the uh matlab workspace it's actually really simple all you do here is come click on op trim three this is the one we care about grab drag and drop it up here to the MATLAB workspace and it will copy this thing called OP trim 3 to your workspace so now if I come back to MATLAB now there's this thing called OP trim 3 and it's got all that information about the operating point that we talked about right so it's got the the X naught which is this column right here and it's got the U naught which is right here okay so it's got all that information so you might want to just go ahead and say save uh, you know, this is trim point one uh, dot mat, and let's call this op trim three, right? That's what we got. Okay, great. We've saved that as a mat file, so that should be uh, good to go. The other thing you might want to consider saving, let's come back to the linear analysis tool here, is, okay, we just saved the solution, but we may want to save the settings or the inputs or the constraints, right? The constraints on all of the states, the state derivatives, and all the inputs. We might want to save these as well. So to save this so that we can recreate this later, you may want to come over here and just click on export. And we're going to, again, export this to the MATLAB workspace. And it's going to be called something called OP spec. Uh, I don't know, maybe to make it consistent, maybe let's call it OP spec 3. And I'll go ahead and export that to the workspace to the MATLAB workspace, excuse me. So when I come back to MATLAB, now, if, let me clear this, we've got a variable called OP spec 
3. So OP spec 3. And again, these are all of the constraints that we put on the states or their derivatives or the control inputs in order to use as an input to the trimming process. So again, maybe what we want to do here is go ahead and say save. I'll call this maybe trim.01 inputs maybe dot mat or settings whatever you like and I'll save my OP spec or op spec 3 okay great so we've saved both of those uh, let me show you one other thing that's kind of interesting uh, let's come back to the linear analysis tool over here and Okay, you might want to consider maybe simulating this, right? You, we were able to analytically show that this was the right solution for this simple system, but if your, your simulation or your model was very, very complicated, you might not believe this. You might need to go and take this trim point, uh, sorry, I'm looking at the wrong column, this one right here, this trim point, right, and take this trim control, sorry, over here, this trim control, and input it to your Simulink model and see if it works, right? So the way you can do that is, obviously, you could come back to your Simulink model over here and replace this with, in our case, it should be 0.5625, and replace this with a constant of 0, and then change the initial condition, wherever you've got that put up in your model, to the initial condition that you solve for using the linear analysis tool, right? So you could manually do that, and uh, maybe that's good practice, but the linear analysis tool's actually got a kind of interesting feature that I'll show you real quick, is you can actually uh, sync this with the model or initialize the model with these variables, okay? So if I click on initialize model, okay, and I'm going to, uh, yeah, let's put this here in the MATLAB workspace, okay? And actually it's already there, but that's all right. Let's click on this again, okay? So what that will do now is if I come back to that same Simulink model and I go ahead and run this, it actually is using that trim point that we had inputted. So now if I come to this, look at this. The position or Y dot, that is bang on at 15 and all the other states are in the appropriate uh, locations here that we desire. Okay, so the only thing that I maybe will point out is that this is a little bit, I don't want to say insidious here, but what it, Simulink is actually doing here is if you come in here to settings and come in here to data import export, when you clicked on that export to model uh, or initialize model button, what it does here is if you look here, <laughs> what it does is it says that when you're loading or you're running this thing, it's trying to input and load this thing called OP trim three and for, for both the input and the initial state. It's trying to load that from the workspace. So that's fine as long as this variable exists in your workspace, right? This OP trim three. But if it wasn't there, you might have a slight problem. So for example, let's say you, you, you run this script again, right? You come back the next day and you say, okay, I want to start over again. Um, here's my system. I come over to my, uh, to my simulation and I try to hit run and it's going to yell at you because it has no clue what this OP trim three variable is. So you probably have to load that variable back in. Luckily, that's exactly why we saved this. So if I go ahead and load trim point oh one dot mat, Right here, I've got OP trim three back in my MATLAB workspace. So now the simulation should run. And there we go. And we're back to where we were. So I don't know about you. I, I personally don't like this because it makes this Simulink model dependent on this other variable that I need to now load from the workspace. So if you don't like this, you can go ahead and just uncheck these two boxes so it's not going to try to find those any longer from the, from the uh, workspace. And you'll basically be kind of back to where you were earlier. So in this case, I think we're just using zero inputs. So yeah, it's slowing down and it's not doing anything super interesting so again something to uh, be aware of that when you click on that button in the linear analysis tool where you want to or this button right here where you want to initialize the variable or the model with this operating point just be careful uh, that you create some dependencies that you might be uh, a little bit uh, difficult to find down the road if you weren't aware of it
Maybe the last thing I want to show before we move on to some other cases is really all of this GUI here in the linear analysis tool. It's a wrapper for the uh, function called find op in MATLAB. So the way you can see that here is actually they have a button here that's really cool here it, that says generate MATLAB script. So if you click on this button here, what it will do is we'll actually generate and a MATLAB script, which is the equivalent of trimming the model here. So it, the other way you could trim the model with all of the appropriate initial inputs here and which ones are known and which ones need to be at steady state, all of that kind of stuff, is you could go ahead and now just save this, this um, automatically generated script. And you can see at the end here, the majority of it, right, the, the engine that's doing the optimization is this find op function. So in this case, when we're doing the trimming here or trying to find this operating point, it's really this nice graphical user interface wrapper to the find op function. And again, I think the linear analysis tool is a much more user friendly way to go about finding a trim point for a system. All right. And the last thing to maybe show is let's come back to the linear analysis tool. Um, all right, we did a lot of work in the linear analysis tool, so you may want to consider saving your entire session here before you exit. So to do that, it's really simple. Just come over here to the Save Session button, and I'll go ahead and call this, I don't know, how about trim point oh one session dot mat, and that will save. So now we're free to go ahead and close the linear analysis tool, and you get this notice here that... Um, you want to save the session, which we just did. So let's go ahead and no, I don't need to save it again. And now let's go ahead and pretend like we're coming back the next day. So I'll go ahead and close all these. I don't need to change, save this auto-generated script here. And what you can do is, uh, again, let's try to get back to where we were. Here is our model here. So one thing that you can do is you may want to come up here and come here and say control design linear analysis tool. That's totally fine. Let's go ahead and start up the linear analysis tool. Now, before you load the session though, uh, if I try right now, it's gonna choke. Let's just show that. So if I come here and click on the session that we had earlier, I load this. Uh, I get this dialog here asking if I want to save the current session that I'm working on. Well, no, because I never do anything. So let's hit no. And we're going to have a couple of issues because it doesn't know what uh, all these variables like MIB, all that kind of stuff was what was needed for this system. So what you want to do before you load the session is make sure you have any of the appropriate uh, variables that are needed for the session. Those should be defined in the MATLAB workspace. So uh, you see it's just sitting here hanging. Uh, I think in the past it's given me errors. Saying, oh, actually here, it's back in the command window, right? Here, all these errors, all this stuff. It doesn't know what X0 is, doesn't know what any of this stuff is. So this clearly didn't work. So to fix this problem, let's just go ahead and kill this session of the linear analysis tool and again I will come here and run this script to initialize all these variables so those are now created here in the MATLAB workspace so now if I go ahead and come back to my Simulink model and launch the linear analysis tool here it is now I can go ahead and load the session that I was doing earlier hopefully with no problem and again we get this dialog telling me I should save and I want to say no I don't care about saving this boring session with nothing in it and there we go everything is back to normal here so you got your op trim and you've got all of the uh we're back to basically where we were okay so that was a good discussion sorry it was a little bit long-winded but i think it's always the it takes a little while to get the first example running so tell you what let's run over to the whiteboard and talk quickly about example number two all right, let's go ahead and switch this from trim case one to trim case two. And now, instead of moving in the positive y direction, let's just go in and how about an arbitrary direction. So in other words, instead of the vehicle going straight up here, let's pick another direction. I don't know, how, how, how about this way? Something like this. So maybe let's go ahead and choose a theta here of uh, maybe like 135 degrees something like that, okay? So what I wanna do now is he, let's modify our constraints on x, x dot, and u. Again, these here are for the positive y direction. How do we translate these into uh, this case where we want a angle of 135 degrees? So let's just walk down one at a time and see which of these we have to modify. Okay, so again, we know that x1 and, or x and y can be free. x dot, this is not gonna be zero any longer, right? And similarly, y dot is not gonna be zero any longer. 
right? You could sit here and do the trigonometry and figure out, yeah, I know it's 135 degrees. I know I want this to be 15 meters per second. So you could do all of that here and figure out what does the X dot and the Y dot need to be to make this vector sum. But let's actually say, let's pretend like we're not that smart and we want the tool to do this for us here. So what we're going to do here is let's say that these can be free. And we're going to want the tool to figure out what is the necessary x dot and y dot components in order to get us the condition we're asking for? Okay, here, uh, theta, this can't be, this has to, it can't be 90 degrees anymore. This has to be basically, what, 135 times um, pi over 180, right? So this is 135 degrees in radians. And again, theta dot is zero. Okay, great. How about constraints on x dot? Okay. Uh, x1 dot, which is x dot, that is definitely not going to be zero. So this is no longer going to be going to be in steady state. All right, so we'll take that off. Y dot is also not going to be in steady state, but the x acceleration, y acceleration should be zero. In other words, steady state. X dot, or sorry, theta dot should be a steady state, and theta double dot should also be in steady state. So I get, I think this is an appropriate set of constraints on x. Okay, uh, here we go. Uh, back down here, so our inputs u1 here. This is free and u2 is going to be zero. Again, this is a similar situation. We could actually use our knowledge of the previous system here and we know that this needs to be 0 0.5625 in order to get us 15 meters per second because you know, it doesn't matter which direction you're heading, right? You're going to need the same velocity to get that same speed in this condition here. But again, let's pretend we're not that smart. We want the tool to go ahead and figure this out for us. Okay? Now, the only other problem here is, if you look at this, nowhere here did we say it's got to be 15 meters a second, right? How are we going to embed this, this, this constraint here that we need the vehicle moving 15 meters a second? So this is where we're actually going to need to actually add some constraints on Y, okay? So let's add an output of this system, like a Y1, to be the velocity of the system, as such here, right? And this needs to be 15. Okay, so this is not free. This is a fixed value. And unfortunately, I don't have another color. So I guess I'll box this up in black here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to have a constraint on the output vector y. Okay, so what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to augment our model, right? If you remember, our simulink model right now is just the plant itself, right? So you just had you coming in and effectively there were internal states, I think, that we were outputting all the states. What we now need to do is make some kind of a measurement box that will output Y so that we can specify and make a constraint on the output, okay? So what we're going to want to do is modify our simulink model to have this extra functionality and then we'll be able to place this constraint on Y inside the linear analysis tool. And now, hopefully, this set of constraints is conducive to allowing the numerical solution in the linear analysis tool to find our, us the operating condition that we're interested in here. Okay, so let's go over to, to Simulink and augment our model and run it through the linear analysis tool. All right, so here we are back at our Simulink model, and now all we're going to do is add a sensor model. So I actually already have that uh, prepared. So I made myself a little block here. If you look under this mask here, you see that it basically picks out x dot and y dot. And then what it does here is it just takes x dot squared plus y dot squared square root. So it basically gives you velocity, right? So, um, and I guess for interesting, I also pull out theta dot, but we're not going to need that. So what we can do is just simply go ahead and hook this up like such. And now what I want to do is let's grab another one of these uh, nub output numbers. And maybe I'll right click and drag and get a second one. This second output, I'm going to call it V. Okay, and now let's hook this up to the model. This last one I don't need, so I'm going to go ahead and get a terminator and just hook this up because I don't need uh, this output. Okay, so now what we've got is we've got a model that is going to output both Y dot as well as V. Okay, so now what I can do, let's go ahead and save our Simulink model, and now I will go ahead and start up the linear analysis tool again, and we will go ahead and try to get this thing trimmed. All right, so let's just go ahead and start up the uh, linear analysis tool. And here we are, and we're going to do the exact same thing we did earlier, is let's just come up here to trim model. And all we need to do now is set this up uh, appropriately. So again, let's just go ahead and clear everything. 
Uh, all right, and let's just start walking down what we did earlier. So I think the only thing that we had constraints on, everything else, all these states were free except for theta. And we said, theta, I really want to make sure that this is 135 times pi over 180, all right? And then theta dot is zero. Okay, those were our two constraints on the state. In terms of their if their state derivatives, if they're in steady state or not, I think all we said was, yeah, x dot has got to be zero, y dot's got to be zero, theta dot has got to be, or sorry, sorry, this was uh, x double dot, y double dot, theta dot, and theta double dot. Those are all equal to zero, or it means their states are in steady state. Um, okay, that should be set up. Then let's come over here to inputs. Just like we did earlier, the only constraint we're going to put on is the torque here is going to be known to be a value of zero. And now let's come here to the output tab. So this is the new portion. So remember, we put this output number two here on the velocity, and this is the signal that we want to be 15 meters a second. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click on known, and I'm going to change this one, which is the V signal, to be 15. Great. So now this is set up and ready to run. The only other thing maybe that I'll mention is that um, he, this first column right here is what the numerical algorithm uses as sort of an initial guess at a solution. So you see it's going to place the system here at 10 minus 10. Again, nobody cares about that. We know that this, that X and Y don't matter for this solution. But here in terms of X dot and Y dot, it looks like it's starting with an initial vector or velocity vector pointing straight up in the positive Y direction. We know that's not actually going to be the solution. So if anything, it should be something closer to, I'm going to, I'm going to put this it's something a little bit more reasonable. How about minus 10 and positive 10, right? This is now a better initial guess at a, at a solution than what we had earlier. So hopefully this will help us with our trimming uh, and the optimization scheme. So let's just go ahead and try it. Go ahead and hit start trimming and... Hey, there it goes. An operating point was successfully met. So here's OP trim 1 and if we go ahead and look at it, I'll go ahead and click on OP trim one and again let's inspect the state and here we go so again nobody cares about X and Y here but ah look at this X dot is minus 10.6 Y dot is positive 10.6 so good that sure looks about right to get us 135 degrees uh, here's theta here's theta dot um, yep all of these are in appropriate steady state right the first two are definitely not in steady state but the last four are all in steady state if we look at the input Again, what we see is, yes, this is the exact same answer we got earlier, and that makes perfectly good sense, right? The system is still doing the same thing. It's just pointing in a different direction, so the thrust should still be the exact same. And now, let's come look at the output. Hey, look at that. The output, it does look like we indeed get 15 meters a second on the output. So again, to double check this, let's go ahead and hit this initialize model button. That will write this OP trim to the Simulink model. We can simulate this to make sure it works. So I'm going to go ahead and hit that. And I'll go ahead and export OP trim to the MATLAB workspace. So it's available now to the Simulink model. And maybe the last thing we'll do here is let's add maybe a scope here on V just to make sure that that is exactly what we want. So I'll grab this. Well, that one's got two inputs. Tell you what, let's just go ahead and ask for a new scope. Hook this up to the V signal. Oops. And again, just to make sure we're all aware, right, as soon as I hit that initialize model button here, what it did is it in data import export, it's going to load in that OP trim for the inputs. So that's going to be the 0.5625 here and the zero here. That's where it's getting those numbers. And then the initial state here for my system here will be also gotten from that OP trim uh, one variable. So now if I go ahead and run this sucker, and we inspect, first off, here, tell you what, let's look at the, the XY planar trajectory of the vehicle. That's here what I'm plotting. XY, oops, sorry, uh, where is that graph? Here it is. Hey, look at that. That looks perfect, right? The system starts here at 10 minus 10, and it sure looks like it's going off in, minus, uh, in 135 degrees. And more importantly, let's go and look at V. And yes, the velocity is sitting here at 15, right? And it's constant. And all the other states are doing whatever they need to be in order to get us the condition we want. So here, again, this second trim point looked awesome. Let's go ahead and move on to how about case number three. All right, so let's move on to how about case three. So case three that I want to investigate is how about a 60-second uh, orbit 
uh, with u1 is equal to 0 0.75. So we're gonna just gonna set the uh, axial thralls. We're gonna set the 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 axial engine here at 0.75. And what I want this thing doing is I want this thing going around in some kind of circle here where it's going to take 60 seconds to, to complete one rotation, right? So that's that's the goal. So again, that's the operating condition I want. So we just need to translate this into states, their derivatives, controls, and outputs, any of those kind of constraints. So, um, okay, let's think about this. So again, X and Y, these can be free, right? Or you can specify them. It really doesn't matter, right? X and Y are arbitrary. And in fact, the same goes for theta, right? Because in this case, theta is changing here, so this can be uh, th this should be can be free as well, you know. And actually, x dot and y dot those we should also set to be free in the sense that again we should let the system decide what those need to be. We know that they're going to be changing, right? This this thing is moving around and around and around. So whoopsies. So we definitely know that uh, we should not specify these as certain values. Now, that's not the true for theta dot, right? We know that if this thing is going to go around and complete one revolution in 60 seconds, we know that the angular rate here, or the heading rate change, this better be 2 pi over 60. Okay, so really we're only specifying uh, one constraint on the states. Okay, now how about the state derivatives? Are any of these in steady state? Okay, so x dot, no, this is this is varying, right? This is changing all the time, right? The x dot velocity is changing, so that should not be uh, steady state. This should not be steady state. This should not be steady state because again it's varying. That's also varying. Theta dot here, right? What is theta dot? Theta dot is not zero, it's this non-zero value, so it is, we, we don't want to say that this is at steady state. How about theta double dot though, that should be at steady state, right? Because I want a constant uh, orbit, right? I don't want this thing changing, so it's, uh, th the, the angular acceleration should be constant, so the angular acceleration, or sorry, the ang angular acceleration should be zero, which means steady state, right? Okay, great, so not a lot of constraints here. Uh, what about down here? Okay, the axial thrust, we are going to constrain that here to 0.75 because we know that's what we want, okay? And then the U2, this is what we don't know. This is going to be free. This is kind of one of the key points that we're looking for here is I want the system to be able to solve for what is the appropriate control input or the U2 input to get me this orbit, right? And similarly here for uh, the output here, this should be free. We should not specify anything or put any constraints onto this. So hopefully if we put this into the system, it will get us a solution that gets us this orbit. So again, let's run over to the uh, linear analysis tool and see if that's what happens. All right, I think you're getting to be an old hat at this by now. So let's go ahead and launch the uh, linear analysis tool again, and we'll come down and trim for condition number three. So Again, let's go ahead and clear everything. We'll start from scratch. So I think we well, the only thing we had a constraint on was theta dot here, right? So we said theta dot had better be, um, what did we say? It was 2 pi over uh, 60, right? That was our rate. Okay, and then I think that was the only thing that was also in steady state, right? So theta double dot was equal to 0. So, okay. Uh, how about the inputs? The inputs, the only thing we wanted was we said we were going to set the thrust here to 0.75 and we were going to let the system try to solve for what's the necessary torque needed to hold that. Uh, and for outputs, let's just make sure that these are all cleared. Okay, and I think we're almost ready to go. The last thing we should maybe do is go ahead and set some initial conditions here. Um, or, or these are not in it. Sorry, not initial conditions. These are initial guesses for the numerical routine. So we'll we'll make a rough guess at what's the solution. So let's go ahead and put zero because again that was arbitrary for x, arbitrary for y, x dot and y dot. We had no idea what they were going to be, so we can kind of make something up. I don't know. How about make up? Uh, how about minus five and positive seven again? And it doesn't really matter. Theta, again, this really doesn't matter. It can be anything. Let's just go ahead and make this zero. So again, these ones don't matter since we haven't actually checked the known value. These are all just initial guesses for the routine to start at. All right, so let's go ahead and hit trim. See what, oh, and wow, that was pretty quick. No problem there. So let's go ahead and inspect OP trim one and let's see what we get. So here's the actuals. Yep, it was able to find operating point at X equals zero, Y equals zero, X dot is equal to minus five, Y 
Uh, dot is seven. Uh, here's theta of zero, and yep, it did find the correct uh, state for theta dot. Now, the interesting thing to look at while we're on this tab here is, is look at the, uh, the, the state derivatives here, right? Since we said they're not in steady state, many of these are not zero. In fact, the only one that's zero is down at the bottom. So this is definitely not an equilibrium point, right? Because all of these numbers are, are non-trivial and somewhat large, we can actually expect a little bit of transience, right? So this is not going to settle into an orbit right away. There's going to be some state movement here uh, before we, we uh, get the steady state behavior we're looking for. Okay, let's go look at the inputs. So again, the 7.5 is expected, but aha, this is the number we were looking for. This is how much uh, torque control is needed to maintain and obtain this orbit that takes us 60 seconds to complete. So again, looks like it takes about 16% of full throttle to do that. Um, in terms of the outputs, this really doesn't matter at this point because this is just the initial output. We're going to see that the, that this may change. So, for example, keep in mind here, look, look V here, it says initially is going to be 8.6. I pretty much guarantee the velocity is not going to be 8.6 when we are uh, at steady state in this orbit. So, let's go ahead and tell you what, let's initialize the model with this value. Come back to our Simulink model again uh, and just go ahead and run this thing so when we run it first off maybe we should do is let's go ahead and look at the trajectory and you can see well it's running off here and in fact I need to it looks like I need to expand this the window so I'll tell you what let's let's change the ranges here to be um, the m X minimum let's make this how about minus 300 uh, y x max here of how about 50 y min what was going to be reasonable yeah zero is pretty good here and a y max of yeah 600 is I think is going to help us okay so let's go ahead and run this again maybe and hopefully that x y graph here we go this looks a little better so as you can see right you start down here at zero zero but there's some initial transients right before the system starts settling into its its orbit so we can look at what the velocity is let's go ahead and open up this scope and you said it started at 8.6, but as you can see, there's some serious transients until we initially settle out at a velocity of around, looks like, 7 meters a second. Uh, so this thing is going 7 meters a second as it's spinning around in this, this orbit. Uh, and again, here are the scopes the state trajectory again this is kind of hard to visualize right here I guess this XY graph helps a little bit but it really would be a lot nicer if we could actually draw the vehicle here and visualize this a little bit more precisely so this is maybe a small plug for our upcoming video where we're going to talk about using Simulink 3D animation to actually animate this scenario here and draw what's going on so we don't have to just stare at graphs to try to understand what the vehicle is doing in this scenario but um, that's for another discussion. In the meantime, it looks like we, again, were able to trim this thing to the appropriate operating point. Uh, for example, you can see here's the orbit limit cycle that we're settling into. And I think if you look at the timestamps here, these are about 60 seconds apart. You can see it's not the most precise thing in the world, but I, yeah. It's about 60 seconds apart. So, great. Everything seems to be working uh, like we expect. All right, so tell you what, let's go on to our last example of case number four. All right, so the last case I want to look at is case four, which is actually uh, revisiting case one, right? This was the positive y velocity, but now I want this, instead of 15 meters a second, I want this at 10 meters a second, okay? So all of these constraints are basically the same as case one, except the y dot constraint, all right? So this one is now gonna be 10. Everything else is pretty much the same. So I'll just leave all these like, maybe I'll draw it like just an arrow to say this is, all of these inputs are, so the arrow <laughs> means same, as example one right and we're just going to load in what we had earlier and just make one modification again maybe while we're sitting up here at the whiteboard we could uh, we can actually compute ahead of time what we are supposed to get just to make sure our trim solution comes out proper um, i think what we said earlier was we saw that the the thrust needed for this u1 that was going to be it was ct v squared over f max so again, plugging in all the numbers here, and now V of 10, we should be getting a value of 0.25. So 
Let's run over to the trim tool and again, we'll just load in our results from case one, modify one constraint to be 10 instead of, um, instead of 15 and verify that we get a quarter. All right, so for the last time, we will come here and launch the linear analysis tool and like usual, come to trim the model. And now let me go ahead and minimize the Simulink model and we'll note here that it's actually really handy now that we saved trim.01inputs.mat earlier. If you remember, these were the operating specs needed to trim for case number one. So instead of me sitting here having to punch in all of these manually and hoping I don't make a mistake, what I'll do here is let's come back to the MATLAB workspace. I'll just go ahead and load trim.01inputs. That creates opspec3 here in the MATLAB workspace. So now when I come back to the linear analysis tool, what I can do is I can go ahead and import from the MATLAB workspace, operating specification number three. So if I hit import, that should have all of the inputs necessary to trim for this case. The only thing I want to do different for case four is I don't want 15 meters a second, I want 10 meters a second. The last thing to maybe note here is, let's go bring up the Simulink model kind of up in the background. In particularly, I'm caring about this V2 here, okay? So if I come here to outputs, Notice here that we're missing this second out port. If you remember, we added this second out port during case two. So operating spec that we generated in uh, case one didn't have this. So if I try to trim right now, we get an error saying that the operating specifications that we have here are out of sync with the model that we are trying to, to basically trim. Okay, well, luckily it's got this, it tells us to use this sync with model button. So if I come back over here to uh, the, the trim inputs, right, let's just go ahead and hit sync with model. And there we go. So now we get this uh, to be consistent. And again, we will come back and just double check everything is the way we want it to. Yep, still got our 10 meters. And now what we can do is let's go ahead and start trimming. And there we go, it's successfully met. I guess I can get rid of this diagnostic viewer. I don't need that error anymore. Here we go, OP trim one has been created. And let's go ahead and look at it. And as expected, we get all of, yep, these are all meeting the requirements we need. More importantly, check the inputs. And yes, here's that 0.25 that we calculated on the board. All right. And again, like we did earlier, what we should probably do at this point is save this trim point because we're actually going to make use of this a little bit later. So again, just to refresh your memory, what we're going to do to save uh, both the inputs, maybe we should do that first. Let's go ahead and export uh, opspec1 to the MATLAB workspace. Okay. And then I need to go ahead and move the trim point to the workspace. Okay. So now, back in the MATLAB workspace, I've got OP spec 1, which is the operating specifications needed to generate this uh, 10 meter a second trim. And then we've got OP trim 1. Okay, so what we should probably do here is let's go ahead and save as trim.04.mat. This is going to be OP trim 1. And then we're also going to save trim.04, uh, what do we call this, input dot mat and that was op spec or op spec one great okay so we've got all of those saved um and with that i think this is a good point to, place to leave it i hope you enjoyed the discussion here where all we talked about was mostly how to use the linear analysis tool to trim the simulink model now the reason we actually saved these two case number one and case number four is the next step that's probably in the back of your head is now that I have this model trimmed and I know operating conditions at two different points, maybe what we might want to do is linearize this nonlinear model about those two. So that's actually our very next discussion is how to linearize a Simulink model uh, about an operating point using the linear analysis tool. So I hope you'll join us at that future video. And if you've been a longtime subscriber, thanks so much for sticking with us. If you're new to the channel, please do consider subscribing because it helps me continue making these. And we will have a lot more discussions on Simulink, MATLAB, control systems engineering, et cetera, in the future. So with that being said, I hope to catch you at a future video. Until then, I'll talk to you later. Bye.